Remember that time that you let your homegirl borrow your wig and she brought it back looking like who did it and why? Or that time that you went out really late, woke up the next day, didn't remember what happened and your wig remembered everything. Remember that time that you left your wig in the trunk of the car and it just rolled around and looked like, oh my gosh, Jesus, did it get hit by every single ugly stick in the forest? I'm here to help you solve those problems. Probably not all of those problems, just really your wig problems. But nonetheless, we'll get it taken care of in this video. So I'm going to be showing you how to revamp a wig like this here. And you guys can see it's looking pretty busted. It has some softness still in the bangs, but the rest of it is literally moving like one, one piece. It's, it's going to move the whole wig. So we need to soften this baby up. So the first thing that we'll want to do is toss it on a wig head like this. Just pin her in place. And we'll go ahead and get it taken care of. Now just so you guys know, I've got two wigs like this to fix. So I'm going to show you a separate video as well, uh, how to fix this wig in a different method. So if that interests you, make sure that you subscribe. Okay, so now that we've got this wig up here, we can kind of see what's going on with it. I'm going to go ahead and I've got a wig brush here. If you don't have a wig brush like this one here, you can use a paddle brush or a vent brush. With the vent brushes are the ones with like the holes in the back of them like that. Uh, the paddle brush looks like this here, but it doesn't usually have the metal teeth and yeah, that's pretty much the main difference. From there, what you're going to do is go ahead and work in sections. Pause because I pinned this thing crazy. Uh, let's, let's pull this down in the back like it should be and we're just gonna pin her back here too Now the nice thing about using the mannequin heads like this is you can easily see what's going on in the back And then it stays secure because you're able to pin it in place and you still aren't legally allowed to stab people in the head So so I'm gonna go ahead and start brushing this out from the ends and working my way right on up Okay, so I've brushed out the wig and you guys can see like the back where there's been quite a bit more friction, just car seats, things like that. It's still a little rough looking. Around the front, you can see potential though, just right in this region. But the ends are still pretty stiff down here. So I wanna let you guys know there are a few different things that can actually lead to stiffness on the wigs. The first is uh, usually friction. Uh, then you've got dirt and debris from like makeup and just, you know, th different things that are going on in the air. Oils, if you put products in there, which by the way, I don't really recommend putting a ton of product in synthetic wigs. It's just gonna cause them to be more stiff over time and more prone to issues like this. So now what we need to do is go ahead and cleanse this wig. So come on with me to the kitchen and I'll show you guys exactly how to do all that. Okay, so once you have that wig brushed out, you wanna go ahead and uh, you can either grab like a basin, you can find them literally for a dollar at Dollar Tree if you didn't wanna use your kitchen sink. Uh, but in our instance, we've got a stainless steel kitchen sink. It can be bleached, all of that, so I'm not really worried about germs and all that in there. It's not a big deal. Um, and I'm going to be using a mild soap. Now this is a synthetic wig, so I'm not going to be using like a specialty shampoo or anything like that on there. The soap I'll be using is Dr. Bronner's Hemp and Citrus. It literally has like 18 different uses. You can use it as body wash, you can use it as facial cleanser, you can use a lot of different stuff. Um, I don't use it for all of that. I use it for cleaning primarily in our house. And because this is a, because this is a synthetic fiber, I'm going to be utilizing it for that as well because I've seen a lot of people talk about how you can condition synthetic wigs. It's probably more of those cosplay cheap wigs because a quality wig, I've tried, they don't condition well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a bit of the soap. I've got some lukewarm water here. It's lukewarm enough for the Lord to spew it out of his mouth. If you didn't catch that reference, you know, read your Bible. And I'm just going to put uh, some of the soap in there and give it a good swirl. Now I'm doing this without the wig in here because I want you guys to see how cloudy the water turns once you add the soap into it. And that way you can be able to distinguish what is from the wig and what is from the soap. Because a lot of times like makeup, things like that will end up showing through later. And like when you look at the wig, it usually looks entirely clean, but that's not always the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this wig and just toss it right on in the water. Now what you'll wanna do is try to keep the wig out of the center, or the hair out of the center of the wig, and just push that hair right on into the water. Just totally submerge it. Once you've done that, you're just gonna go ahead and take it and give it a dunk. You're gonna go ahead and pull your hands over it. 
Try not to pull your hands through it too much. You don't really want to do a ton of manipulation of this in here while this hair is wet. Okay, now I know a lot of times people will put makeup around the part line, so you just want to work through there with your fingers, make sure there's nothing on there, which it looks as though there is not. And from there, we're just going to go ahead and continue working through here. Now you guys can see that water has gotten a little bit more cloudy. But honestly, like this wig is not too dirty, because trust me, I've ha I had another one that Allison used to wear all the time. And baby, that wig had been through the ringer. So we're just gonna go ahead and dip it a few good times, just like that. Now, just through doing that, like I'm noticing a difference in terms of the slip on the hair as we're getting things off of there. So it makes a big difference being able to get that wig clean. Now look at that water now. See how cloudy it's looking? So from there, I just want to go ahead and make sure I'm continuing to cleanse and work through there just to get any product out of there. Judging by the look of the water, this is more hairspray than anything else. Because if this was makeup, it would be likely turning more of like a brown coloration um, just because my wife is brown, you know, she's a brown girl. So once we have done that, I'm going to go ahead and pull this on out of here and we're going to drain the sink. I'll refill it again with uh, cool water. Okay, so now that we've refilled with cool water, I'm going to take that same wig and we're just going to dunk it again. Now this just helps to make sure that we've gotten all of the residue of cleanser and all of that out of this hair, okay? So once we've done that, which I can tell by the feel of it, we've gotten that on out of there. So we are good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this unit just to get some of the excess hair out of there. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and toss that baby into a towel like the one I have over here. So let's wring that out here and we'll just toss it right on over here on the towel. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this back to my filming space. So after we've got it shampooed and all that, I have it back on the wig head. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just kinda gently separate out this bottom portion with my fingers here. Now I want to ensure that uh, I'm not doing a, a ton of difficult stuff with the brush here. Now just so you guys know, like I'm, I'm gonna have to show you guys up close. This wig has been through the ringer. Um, this wig is about three years old now. It's not the first time we've had to revamp it. So, um, just so you know, you can save a ton of money on wigs like this. I know somebody is watching and probably thinking like, you know, why don't you just buy another wig? You could, but this has been three years of a wig now versus having it for say like three months and going out and buying another 50 or $60 wig. Like, take that, do your math, and figure out how much money has been saved. We believe in being good stewards in this family of what God's blessed us with, so that's kind of where that comes from. But just so you guys can see, like, with it literally has tracks coming loose and everything, and you best believe I will tack that baby right on back down uh, with a needle and thread, and we will keep it moving because it's just not that serious to be trying to throw away the wig for. It's still in really good shape. So, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take that, and I'm gonna be using a round brush like this here, and you can use whatever blow dryer you like. You're gonna be using a round brush like this. Try not to use your wrist like this as you're working with it. Use your fingers like this. Notice the wrist stays straight. The fingers are what's turning the brush. So that's what's gonna make a difference in terms of whether or not you get carpal tunnel. You're welcome. Go ahead and begin back here, and I just wanna pick out a section of this hair. I'm gonna lightly brush through that on the ends. And from there, I'm gonna begin to blow dry out this wig. Now we're gonna blow dry it on medium to low. So if you don't have a medium setting on your dryer, put it on low, because if you put it on high, there's a good chance of you burning up the wig, even if it is heat safe. 
All right, Glam Fam, just to kind of add to what I was saying here, uh, use it on medium or low heat. If you find that your blow dryer is not strong enough, you can use a higher heat, but start out holding the blow dryer at a further distance away. Now, you guys can see I'm really not blowing this hair in every different direction. And I'm trying to work in small, organized sections. The size of your sections is going to be huge because uh, if you're picking the wrong size sections, then it's, it's just going to be something that takes you forever. So you typically want to take pretty small sections while you're blow drying and try to work in those sections, making sure to roll at the wrist so you get a nice curl on those ends. So you guys can see me rolling it all the way up to help and still curl like this. Now I'm gonna continue this around to the sides of the head, just like I did throughout the back. And we're gonna continue that process all through so you get curls just like you see here on the bottom. That's what we're looking for, is that restored shine and silkiness to the wig. So we're continuing that around the sides. Now this wig already had some pre-cut layers in it. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of work with what those have going on. But you guys can kind of see the hair going in is a bit more rough. And as it's being blow dried, it smooths those ends out a bit. So it's not just the cleansing process that softens this wig. It's actually the process of applying that heat and blow drying. You guys can see here is kind of mangled. So same situation, lightly brush it out, blow dry it. And you guys can see I'm kind of hitting it from different angles just to ensure that I'm getting all the sides evenly warm and evenly dry while we blow dry through this process. You guys can kind of see here, uh, now I'm gonna brush through with the brush again, just to kind of see if there are any harder areas on the ends that still need a bit more heat and uh, need to be silkened out a bit more. If I notice that, like I do right here, I'm gonna go in with a round brush and a blow dryer again and uh, warm it up a bit more. So if you wanted to use high heat, this would be when to use it. And I'm just taking big sections to kind of encourage that hair to silken out and get some curl in it all along the bottoms where it's a bit more frayed and icky. And that's pretty much it. All right, you guys, and there you have it. That is how you fix your old, stiff, tired wigs that have been through the ringer. Look, it was once moving all as one piece. Now it's moving individually. Look at that softness. And of course, if you'd like to see how you can change up the style, I'll be showing you another video on that here soon. So make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, all that loveliness. And until next time, you guys, take care. God bless. Stay glam. And you know I love you, boo. Bye.